It all starts in the library of the Jiang University of Chinese Traditional Medicine. Sui, the main character and part-time student of this educational institution, is looking for a book. He stumbles upon asphygmology, but it's not the one he needs. The guy is nervous, running his eyes over the shelves of the rack. Between the rows, another student in a hood comes to him, suggesting that the book he needs is on the top shelf and it is the tenth on the left. Sui found the right book with his eyes and was pleasantly surprised. This is exactly what he needs. He turned around to thank him and ask how this stranger found out about which book Sui was looking for. He was shocked to see his face. He differed only in the chocolate color of his hair. The stranger's hair was ashen. Suddenly, the pendant on his neck glows, and the body simply disappears, going to that very book. It is called Secrets of Pinhu Pulses. The other Sui catches her in his arms, saying goodbye. He knows that the kid will be fine, because in 25 years he will return there again. Meanwhile, in the classroom, the teacher says that next week they will hold the final exam. He asks to pay special attention to the last topic Secrets of Pinhu Pulses. The teacher hopes that the students will prepare well and get excellent grades. They began to be indignant that they had only passed this topic the day before and therefore did not have time to learn it. Someone asked if it was really that complicated. The teacher asked them to be silent. Since most of the students are already in the fourth year, the teacher promised to teach the one who gets the highest score four components of diagnostics. Everyone's eyes immediately shone. That was the end of the lesson, and the students began to discuss what had happened violently. Professor Lai Kemen will personally teach the four components of diagnostics, sensation. Professor Lee is a doctor of the highest rank, and if he personally teaches someone, then this student will not be among all equals. Four diagnostic components, examination, listening, questioning, and pulse probing. It has been developed for a long time, Moving from master to master, someone said that they have a good chance of getting the highest score. Sui taunted them, Jin Fan and Sun Kai, that they were masters of making out. They'd better read something, maybe they scored a couple of points, who knows. Some guy grinned at the fact that they will only start reading now, it's just nothing before the exam. They moved to that group from the emergency medicine. Sui and Jin Fan with Sun Kai ignored his remark, preparing to return to the bedrooms. They packed up and went to the exit. The stranger was angry that a pathetic group of laymen did not put him in anything at all. Meanwhile, Jin Fan was surprised by Sui's behavior, because I didn't like to go back to the bedroom. He also dyed his hair gray. He looked grown up or aged with that look of his into the distance. Sui is a fourth year student, and he is 25 years old. 25 years ago. He fell into the deep antiquity of their world and lived to the present. After his rebirth, his jade pendant became part of the flow technique, a technique capable of absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. When Sui mastered this technique, he received eternal life. From ancient times to the present, he has walked many roads and seen different people. But regardless of epochs or empires, wars and discord have always surrounded him. And only for the sake of a hopeless chance to return, Sui hid wherever he could and avoided numerous contacts with people. And books became his best friends. And although he reviewed countless canons, he never found the answer to how to get back. So he could only wait. Up until that day, Jin Fan and Sun Kai were planning to play pranks in the dorm, and Sui was just sighing. The next day there was an exam. It lasted two pairs or 90 minutes. It's not enough for students, but the teachers didn't care. Everyone diligently wrote what they knew. As it turned out, the stream had another ability. It allows you to collect images of anything in the spiritual palace, as well as all the books that he has ever read. So he created a library in his palace. All the knowledge he accumulated helped him with the questions in the exam. The next day, the teacher was tearing up and throwing up, calling them the worst band he had ever had. He could not have imagined that the students would pass the exam so badly. The teacher calmed down and noticed that there were also good works. The same guy who was digging into the transferred, Luo Gang, scored 90 points. The teacher congratulated him. The guy was incredibly proud of himself. He was already sure that Professor Lee's personal training was in his pocket, and that such pathetic losers like his classmates could not compete with him. Luo Gang had already asked when they would be able to start training. Professor Lai told him to take his time, because he didn't have the best result, and asked him to sit down. The old man asked which one of them was Su Yi. He has 100 points. There was an uproar in the audience. Everyone did not understand how he managed it, because he could not have memorized the secrets of Ping Hu pulses. Su Yi's friend slapped him on the back, congratulating him. The teacher threw chalk at his forehead. Lai's profession told Su Yi to come to his reception point. He will personally teach him the four components of diagnostics. Jin Fan and Sun Kai were already about to acknowledge Sui's 100 points. Sun Kai thought they would go to Xiaoyezhuang again, 
but Jin Fan got invitation cards for the celebration of the centenary of the Mengxing Music Conservatory. Sui thought Xiaoe Zhuang was better. There were many beautiful girls at the Mengxing Conservatory, and there is even an opportunity to meet the Beichu sisters. Jin Fan hurried them to go to the venue. Sui didn't care at all, but his friends were looking at the beauties, and it was on that day that they were lucky to meet those most famous Beichu sisters. Jin Fan and Sun Kai couldn't get enough of their luck. They wanted to approach the beautiful sisters. Sui thought they were really special, their aura was pure, and they would have become strong warriors before. But at that moment they were ordinary people. Sui felt something strange. Some guy is deliberately absorbing the aura around him. Sui did not expect to see such a thing in that century. A living aura warrior. This is a master who relies on the energies of heaven and earth, strengthening himself. Their abilities are very different from ordinary people. While traveling in the past, Sui often met aura warriors. Ancient times are considered a golden time for masters. Therefore, there used to be many strong warriors and generals. But a lot has changed, and industrialization has weakened the natural aura, which led to the decline of the aura warriors. Until now, the aura continued to weaken. There are practically no aura warriors in the present tense. And that same guy suddenly started running, heading towards the Beichu sisters. He stole a bag from one of the girls. Sui was disappointed that the aura wars had fallen so low. Both girls ran after him, and one shouted after him to return her sister's bag. She also told the second girl that she would pursue him herself, and asked her sister to call a detective. She asked if she was sure, and the girl promised that she would cope, because she had a plan. The first sister said to just do as she says. The second trusted her, stopped, and asked her to take care of herself. She told her not to worry and ran on. The second sister has already called Detective Wang and asked for his help. She needed him right at that moment. He replied that the K-Squad would arrive soon and they would be wearing glasses. They're already leaving. This squad is a special unit of Aura Warriors. Sui grinned contentedly. He was getting more interesting by the second. The second sister wanted to help the first, but she had to meet the detective and the squad. She had no choice. She ran into an abandoned building and saw her sister lying unconscious on the floor. The second sister's bag was lying next to her. She anxiously asked if she was okay and went to her. There was a thief standing around the corner. He jumped out and hit the girl in the stomach. He called them just ordinary people and told her not to poke her nose where she wasn't asked. She was lying on the floor and couldn't do anything because of the pain. The thief grinned at the fact that she really believed she could catch him. He was going to smash the K-Squad. Then Sui appeared in the window. He asked if it wasn't too wasteful for an aura warrior to use force for petty theft. The thief tensed, first class of the third category. According to Sui, the guy is not good enough to be called an aura warrior. The thief was shocked, not understanding when Sui managed to get into the room. He didn't even feel it. Meanwhile, Sui jumped from the window inside. The thief advised him to get out, making a threat on his face. He replied that these were the usual words of a low-grade villain. He was enraged by these words and, gathering strength in his fist, told Sui to go to hell. The thief attacked him, telling the brat to die. In the end, he only left a hole in the floor, and Sui was not there. The thief ended up with his head in search of the guy. He stood behind him and asked mockingly if he had lost anyone. The thief continued to attack, but Sui deftly dodged every attack with a smile. When the opponent opens up, Sui gets serious and punches him in the stomach. And then, in flight, he hit the thief in the chest and stomach with both hands. He was lying on the floor and, wiping his lip, discontentedly asked where Sui came from. He replied that he just doesn't like it when girls are beaten, and called himself an ordinary guy. Of course, the thief did not believe that he was really ordinary. He thought that Sui was the new fighter of the K-Squad. The thief was surprised that he was stronger than him. He had no choice but to use the ace up his sleeve. He begged for mercy, giving a device developed by the Beichu family with the support of China as a ransom. It is very valuable. Since the second sister had already called the police, the thief urgently needed to escape. No one likes problems. He was about to leave, but Sui stopped him by grabbing his shoulder. He asked why they didn't talk a little longer, clearly hinting at a fight with an evil smile. As a result, the thief was neither alive nor dead. He was well beaten. Sui planted the sisters against the wall and took the device with him. These were ordinary VR glasses. The guy stood on the roof and looked at the squad, which arrived pretty quickly. Sui didn't understand what was so important about those glasses, but I decided to borrow it for a couple of days for games. Meanwhile, the detective was reporting to the governor by phone. Using the Manx and students as bait was a bad idea, and it was the detective's fault. He sighed. The second sister apologized to him. 
It was their decision. They didn't want the fruits of grandfather's work to fall into the wrong hands. Detective Wang told her not to blame herself. He's there to help his nieces. The second sister saw the man who took the VR glasses. And it wasn't the K-Squad. It was a student who came to the party. Suyi was dealing with that device in his room. VR glasses, custom made by the country, designed for aura warriors. There must be some mystery behind them. But at first glance, for Su Yi, these were ordinary VR glasses. At the same moment, Jin Fan and Sun Kai returned. The latter said that he knew that Su Yi had returned to study. They were indignant, not understanding how their friend could leave them there. They noticed the device that was near Su Yi and exclaimed in surprise. These were exclusive VR glasses for fantasy. Jin Fan didn't know that Brother Yi was playing secretly from them. They haven't had time to get their points yet. Su Yi replied that he decided to try to play fantasy, since Jin Fan and Sun Kai don't shut up about it. He noticed with a disinterested look that he did not understand what was so interesting about these games. They began to explain to him. Two years ago, a large-scale VR game was developed. It was warmly received by the players for the feeling of complete immersion and ease of management. It presents a giant open world with a large degree of freedom, where players write their stories. The fantasy in their eyes was beautiful. Sui realized that this was not just a VR game, agreeing with Jin Fan and Sun Kai, and asked them to leave him and discuss the fantasy another time. Professor Lai was supposed to have a class on Monday, and he needed to prepare for it. Jin Fan nodded and remembered that they had met Professor Lai, and he asked to pass something. Sui will need to go to his clinic the next day. He will personally teach four practices of medicine. Sui grinned contentedly. Meanwhile, the second sister was taking a shower. She came out of there and told the first one that she had forgotten her tiger cub again. She put it on the table and asked me not to forget it next time. She hugged her sister and said it was time to apply the ointment, and offered her help. The second sister said not to worry, because his bruise has almost healed and it doesn't hurt so much anymore. Only the bruise on his shoulder was actually still huge, and the first sister did not understand why. As soon as she touched it with her finger, the second sister squeaked because of the pain. She lied. The first one came up with something. Since Western medicine doesn't work, she suggested trying Chinese medicine. They went to Dr. Lee's clinic. Sui practiced with him. The doctor asked for their names. The first sister's name was Beichu Yijin, and the second was Beichu Yuren. Sui tensed up because he saved them and stole their VR glasses. He was wearing a hood at the time, and he really hoped that his face was not visible. It would be bad if they recognized him. Sui lied to Dr. Lee that his grandfather had returned and his mother was calling for dinner. Only now the old man remembered that his grandfather had been there only the day before and told him not to talk his teeth but to show what he had learned in a month. Sui continued to look for excuses, but Dr. Lai said that there are no excuses in the way of medicine. He asked if Sui had been fooling around all that month. The guy was already scared, because the old man seemed to get bigger during the lectures. Hiran didn't understand what was going on. Sui had no choice, he was already wearing a mask. Dr. Lee finally introduced him to his patients. Sui was his disciple, and despite his age, he is an excellent doctor and therefore will examine urine. Sui asked what was bothering them. Yuren said that a month ago she was hit by a bicycle, and she had been using western ointment all this time, which did not help. Yijin said that a month ago she fought with a big brown bear, which swung at her, after which she flew away. Sui thought that Yijin had a strange sense of humor and that even if it was true, no one would believe her. He touched Yuren's wrist. Dr. Lee asked what the guy thought, and Sui replied that her blood was blocked, so she needed a massage and cleansing. As for the youngest, she wants to skip classes and came here to pretend to get a certificate. Yijin was outraged while Yuren was laughing. Dr. Lee said the diagnosis was good and asked if Sui could get a massage. He would agree, but Yijin was against the guy Masur. Sui sighed, surprised that anyone else cared about the gender of the doctor. Yijin was held outside the door of the office by Dr. Lai and a nurse, while she screamed that if Sui did something to his sister, she would tear him up. The guy was more worried about Yuren, because she had been watching him from the moment she entered the office. It's like she sees right through him. Yuren apologized for the sister who caused them problems. Yijin is just too worried about her, that's all. She recommended this clinic because she read a lot of positive reviews on the internet. Sui promised to definitely cure Yuren. He liked her outwardly. It seemed to the girl that she had seen him somewhere before. Sui told her to lie down on the couch and added that if it was unpleasant or painful for her, then she should immediately say so. The bruise turned out to be because of the aura of that thief. Sui held his palm over it and pulled out the aura from there. The entire aura of the thief randomly accumulated in one place. No wonder the bruise didn't go away for so long. 
Injuries caused by the aura need to be treated with it. Urine was hot, but that was how it was supposed to be. The aura needed to be absorbed, so Sui concentrated his in his thumb and touched the bruise with it. The aura splashed all over the room. Urine immediately felt much better, and her body was ready to take off from overflowing lightness. This was the end of the treatment. Sui asked the girl to get up and move. The pain is really gone. The guy said that urine should rest and not get wet, otherwise the recovery will slow down. She thanked him, and when Sui turned his back on her, she remembered that the guy who saved her and her sister and stole VR glasses also looked like that. Yurin asked if they had met somewhere before. Yurin thanked Sui as she left. He said to contact me if something happens. Yijin rushed to hug her sister. She was worried about Yurin, but she said that Yijin just watched the show. Then she asked how her back was, and Yurin replied that everything was fine. She apologized to Sui for confusing her with another one. He said that it was okay because his appearance was pretty standard, reminded about the rest and asked to be careful on the road. Sui was glad that Yurin didn't recognize him, but he felt that they were being watched again the aura thread led to the Beichu sisters. By evening, Sui went to look for the next one, and stumbled upon the same thief. He asked if he was watching them again. He tensed up when he saw Sui again, but this time he was going to use some special technique against him to teach a lesson. His whole body was overflowing with aura, and for a second his skinny body was overgrown with strong muscles, and his clothes were torn in some places. Sui was shocked by his appearance. The thief said that he would no longer prevent him from putting on his glasses. He grabbed a nearby trash can and threw it at Sui. He deftly dodged, jumping on some rope. He asked if his teacher had taught the thief this new technique. He really became stronger, but he had two minutes left to live. The thief considered his words nonsense and said that this technique was a master of the league and that Sui would not be able to dodge forever, but he once again dodged the attack. The guy thought that these words were again like an old villainous dialogue. He was bored. The thief called him a stupid jerk and told him to take the fight if he had the courage. Sui grabbed the rope and asked if there was anyone else in the league and why no one would help him. While the thief was attacking him, Sui wrapped a rope around his body. He replied that his mentor believed in him and therefore allowed him to act alone. Sui said he was being cheated because if he was the thief's teacher, he would have kicked him out after the mission failed. While the guy continued to smash everything around, Sui was spinning around him with a rope. In the end, he tied up the thief, tying a bow after several turns. Sui assumed that he simply did not return and did not report his failure, fearing punishment. And at that moment I was trying to catch up. Of course, such a big guy easily broke the rope and promised to pull out Sui's tongue. He crawled under it. He was dragging his feet as much as possible and just then there were only five seconds left. Sui didn't even budge during the next attack, and the thief's fist predictably didn't reach him, stopping halfway. The thief's body was unable to move. Sui made a gun with his fingers and told Tom to take a chance if he could. His time is up. The thief's body was struck by a hellish pain, and he began to shrink. All the muscles evaporated and he fell down, asking Sui to finish him off. The thief was sure he was finished when he touched his neck. He thought that a master like Sui wanted to wear him down so that he could eventually use him and make him part of his power. But Sui was checking his health. Pale face with dark blue eyes. The guy asked how long the thief has been practicing this technique. He replied that it was only a month and a half. Sui asked him to stick out his tongue, after which he examined him carefully. And then he asked for a paw. And the thief on reflexes stretched out his hand to him. Only then was he indignant that he was not a dog, but a man. Sui said that he was lucky, because his aura was just confused. He was going to unravel it, and the thief did not understand why they were helping him. Sui explained that his technique allows you to greatly increase the aura, but only for two minutes. When the time runs out, the thinking aura will begin to destroy the body. The thief was surprised, because the teacher did not tell anyone about it. While Sui was treating him, he asked what was wrong with those VR glasses to risk his life for them. The thief pushed his hand away and told Sui not to think that since he had saved him, he would get an answer to this question. He wasn't going to betray his teacher. Sui immediately laid him on his stomach and, pressing his lower back with his hand, lifted his legs. The swallowtail method helps blood circulation in the lower back and relieves pain. The thief was hurt and he promised to tell everything. Now there is little aura and spiritual herbs, even after climbing all the grief, it has become impossible to find. Therefore, many have abandoned self-improvement. Sui pressed his elbow harder on the small of his back and told him to be closer to the point. The thief exclaimed that he should not press so hard, because he could not speak. When it seemed that the Aura Warriors would disappear, the teacher appeared. He said that there is still a new world for Aura Warriors where they can live. There is not only an abundance of natural aura, but also an inexhaustible supply of herbs and jade. 
the lack of aura will no longer be a problem. So he treated the thief so well that he was getting much better. He thought they were just lost aura warriors, but it was probably a powerful organization. And the new world hides the technique of eternal reincarnation. Suyi thought about it and asked what this has to do with VR glasses. But ordinary VR glasses are useless. The teacher told them that the key to the new world is in the fantasy. And the only way to find it is special VR glasses of the K-Squad. But they wanted to appropriate it only to themselves. Suyi understood everything and finally stopped treating the thief, asking him to get up. He asked if it hurt anywhere. The thief jumped up, saying that it did not hurt, but even more calming. He was surprised by Sui's abilities. He noticed the strange behavior of the thief and told him to stand still. Sui told him to stop chasing the sisters and walk away. The thief told him to wait. Sui was strong, and he offered to work with them together. No matter how strong the teacher is, they will be able to defeat many aura warriors. Sui refused. He called the thief a lousy actor. He knew perfectly well that he wanted to lure him to his teacher. The thief was alive because he hadn't hurt anyone yet. But Sui promised that if he ever tried to attack someone again, the flash of aura would be the last thing he would see. The thief was not afraid, but called him handsome. When Sui returned to his room, Jin Fan and Sun Kai had already left to play. He remembered that according to the thief, reincarnation was connected with a VR game, but he still considered it nonsense. Sui had to study in order to benefit the world in the future. There is no time for games. But in the end he was lying on the bed in VR glasses. The interest was stronger. The launch has started. Identification is complete. Character generation is complete. The voice said that he was welcome to the fantasy game. When Sui opened his eyes, he saw a floating island connected by a chain and a solid forest around it. There was something sitting in the bushes that gave off a red glow, but Sui didn't notice it. The boar's eyes were red. Sui had his back to him, but he clearly felt someone else's presence. The smell of grass and branches seemed real to him, and he could not believe that everything was so realistic. While the boar was rushing at him, Sui reasoned that the texture of the leaf was also too realistic to be fake. And it also seemed strange to Sui that he, as a beginner, was not teleported to the village. He took out his sword and cut the boar in half with one blow. He was too noisy not to be noticed. Sui grunted when he saw four more of the same bulls in front of him. He was wrong, and deal with them quickly. Meanwhile, in the same forest, Yurin accurately hit a magic monkey with a bow. Yijin told her that the case of VR glasses was completely transferred to Detective Wang. Yurin remembered that he had said that he would send all his subordinates to search. Yijin was surprised. Was it really that important? Yurin herself didn't know all the details, and suggested it was better to focus on the monsters. Yijin couldn't talk during the fight. She objected that she was super strong, and asked to look at her weapon. But Yurin's gaze was directed forward. There those same boars were lying, cut in half. Yijin asked if there was no event if there were so many dead boars lying around. Yurin suspected that they were killed by a single player strike. She wondered who was capable of it. Then the system message came. It said that in honor of the opening of the fantasy server, a gaming event begins. All players who have reached level 10 or higher can join by going to the event venue. Gifts and rare equipment will be waiting for everyone. Yijin also wanted to join, but she only had level 9, which made her angry. Yurin told her not to worry, because she could try another time. She will try her luck at the event, and then they will share everything. Yijin knew that her sister was the best, and she was going to pump a little more. Yurin wanted to have time to find the player who defeated all the boars. Meanwhile, the losers were lying around some abandoned house. Some guy thought it was crazy, and asked with fear what kind of game it was. Then he was also killed by an event boss in a cape. Yurin was hiding behind a pillar not far from what was happening. She thought she could find the boar killer there, but she didn't understand what was going on there. There was a very slow regeneration. Even a scratch the girl had to heal for a long time. Yijin peeked out, using the farsightedness skill. Yurin did not understand what the killer's damage was, since he did not allow her to be treated. The nameless one had level 35, so it's not surprising that the regeneration was so slow. This is suicide, not an event. At the moment they disappeared and appeared behind Yurin. He found her. She screamed, saying not to approach. Of course, no one was going to listen to her. Yurin covered herself with her hands, but was saved by Su Yi. He asked if it was the boss of the event. He's been looking for it forever because the map is big. Yurin told him to stop because the boss level was at least 20 less than them. Su Yi asked if that meant he was strong and said he hoped she would help him. Su Yi attacked the boss and dodged his attacks. He jumped back onto the pole and noticed that the movements of the Nameless One were just like those of one of his acquaintances. He uses the same technique. 
Only an acquaintance of Sugi does not like to hide his face. With these words, he struck a strong blow. Nameless's lifespan was tending to zero. Sugi's acquaintance was a butcher and played the violin well. But, in the end, his guts were ripped open, and no one recognized him except his relatives. That man was strong and righteous, and the nameless one is just a bad imitator. Sui stuck a sword into him and cut him in half. The boss was defeated. The system message came again. They congratulated the player Tsui on winning the raid event and getting the first level 30 in fantasy. Yuren was surprised by the double achievement. Tsui and the boss won and broke away from other players. She didn't understand who he was. His reward was an item of the highest quality and a random gift. Two boxes with a question appeared in front of him. Tsui opened it and looked. The Dragon Slayer's sword turned out to be a special gift, and an ancient page with a drawing turned out to be a random gift. He didn't know what to do with the special item, whether he should just put it on or something else. It seemed to him that the youth was too developed. Sui hoped that a random gift would please him more. In the drawing there was a Kaoran, an incomprehensible tangle of rings. He remembered the thief's words about the new world. Meanwhile, Detective Wang was informed that the personnel of the special group were in position. He said that it would not be easy further. His subordinate asked if the kidnapper could be in cahoots with the K-Squad. The detective replied that if that was the case, then it was time to destroy that gang. Sui was standing near the food counter. He said that, as always, he had more spice and acid with him. The cook understood his request. He hadn't seen Sui for more than six months, so he asked if he had a girlfriend. With his internship, he was not up to it. Then he caught a familiar smell. It was Jade. Sui didn't understand what he was doing in a city with a lack of aura. He immediately ran towards him. The cook asked if he was definitely without a girl, since he couldn't wait for food. Sui asked me to give it to someone, except that no one else will eat it. The guy, wearing a hood, went to the toilet. There was that spiritual jade lying next to the sink. Spiritual jade is a jade formed by absorbing spiritual aura over a long period of time. Helps aura warriors strengthen themselves. In their time, it is extremely rare. It will help you get one step closer to Sui's goal. He told the one hiding in the toilet to come out. Detective Wang came out of the booth. He said that no one could resist the temptation of Jade, but he admitted that he underestimated Sui since he was able to notice them so easily. He couldn't believe that there were people left in their days who possessed such a dense aura. Detective Wang directly asked if he stole VR glasses at the anniversary at the Manxin Conservatory. Sui won't get away with it today. There were two more guys who were subordinates of the detective. He called Sui a thief of glasses. The guy was standing with his back to them, and when they wanted to grab him, he just disappeared. Sui was behind the two guys and hit them in some place on the neck. They just fell. Sui asked why Detective Wang was standing on the sidelines, adding that he was really as weak as his subordinates. Detective Wang wondered when Sui appeared in the K-Squad. The man wanted to be gentle with him, and then forget about this case, but now he demanded to tell where his leader and glasses were. And then he asked not to call him uncle, because he is not 30. Detective Wang swung and rushed at Sui, but he easily held his fist with one hand. The guy didn't understand what kind of leader he was talking about, and the detective was surprised at his strength. Sui said that he had an interesting way of asking questions, after which he knocked him to the floor. In his free hand, he concentrated a small ball of aura. Detective Wang thought how careless of him that was. Sui pressed the Zin, Xuan, and Zion dots on the detective's chest. He opened his acupuncture points. Sui said that Ren's veins are clogged, so it's not surprising that the man's aura is not flowing. The guy broke through the blockage. After opening the acupuncture points, Detective Wang will move to a new level. He was surprised that Sui was helping the enemy become stronger. He thought he was being bullied. And anyway, the detective was sure that he was from the K-Squad. Detective Wang gathered all his strength, but was defeated with a single blow, and he didn't remember seeing the dossier on Su Yi. Detective Wang wanted to make him an ally before the guy became an enemy. He said that given his abilities, Su Yi is not in the K-Squad. Detective Wang asked him to go to the detective bureau. Su Yi asked what would happen in case of refusal. The detective was going to force him, and if the guy gets hurt, it's his own business. The man's aura has really become stronger, and it flows very smoothly from the acupuncture points. He's gotten better. However, Sui can still easily throw it away. The treatment worked as it should, and Sui took the jade as payment. He could not have imagined that jade could be used as bait for a thief of glasses. It seems they were just a cover, and the clues themselves are in the game. Plus the parliament that Sui dropped out in the game earlier, with a Heorin pattern. The thief also mentioned that there is information about the new world in the game. Perhaps those people have the same goal as Sui to get information about the technique of eternal reincarnation. 
Detective Wang didn't understand how he lost consciousness and why everything went wrong. Two of his subordinates said they thought the government had banned him from using the aura. Detective Wang replied that the glasses thief had tried it on first. His strength increased by three minutes four times, but even that was not enough to defeat Su Yi. Detective Wang didn't understand who he was at all. Meanwhile, in the fantasy game near the Grape Cave, some guy was explaining himself to the teacher it was a girl. Her disciple said that Mousy had been gone for several days and that he was worried about him. The girl told him not to worry, because her people had already found out his whereabouts. The guy asked about the punishment. The teacher replied that they were her family, and there was no question of any punishment. The student thanked her and left. When she was left alone, she said that animal testing had already begun. The teacher said to try it on Mousy when they catch him. A man was standing behind her. She asked if the torture was over, and he said yes. Some guy was beaten up. The teacher told him to tell him how things were going. He started to apologize in fright, and then the girl called him useless meat and killed him. The man asked them how to act without leads. The teacher said to leave it like that for now. The parchment that fell out of the event was an important clue. They had to get him. When Sui returned to his room, Jin Fan and Sun Kai were lying on their beds in VR glasses. Anyone who is in the game accumulates aura with the help of breathing techniques. The game is just something. Sui was going to take the opportunity and improve his Heoran. With the help of the jade he found, he could switch to a new one. Level. He was going to get to the most important part. Sui reintroduced the library with all the accumulated knowledge and took out a drawing from the cabinet. He didn't understand where Heoran's drawing came from in the game at all. When he touched it, the guy was pulled into a fantasy in the forest secret kingdom. Sui was trying to figure out where a part of the map came from in his memory palace, and he didn't remember seeing her in the game. He assumed that someone was spying on him and wanted to bring him there. Sui didn't know what to do now. He was going to try to follow his wishes, maybe he could find out something. He found himself in a fantasy in the northern forest. The forum said that the secret kingdom can be found using a hidden map. Sui began to cut everything in a row, first a tree, behind which strangers were hiding, then a stone, behind which some people were also hiding. He immediately realized that he was being followed. Sui said that they are not really spies and that they can go out. They asked the same man what they should do, because they were discovered. He told them not to worry, because he was alone. They were going to just kill Sui. He told them to attack. Everyone used the fire element skill, which drains life. This is self-destruction and they probably don't even know about it. It was really dangerous. Sui took out most of the people with a single blow. A strong fire started around. An unknown man was indignant that he had to do everything himself again. He said to give the parchment, and in that case he would give Sui a painless death. The man rushed at him. The guy was surprised that he was also hunting for parchment. Sui wasn't in the mood today. He simply cut the man in half, adding that it was inhumane to use people as bombs. So you won't forgive anyone for this. He called the teacher, who was hiding in a tree. Since all her people are dead, she should have shown up already. The girl did not think that it would be so difficult with him. She didn't know what to do. And then an unknown number called her. She didn't know who wanted what from her. She shouted to the man that it was enough to lie down. And he turned into a fiery man and got to his feet. He has become much bigger than his former self. Sui was surprised. It was a new skill. They originally had an ace up their sleeve. The man had already swung, but someone's arrow hit him from behind. He just disappeared. It looks like Sui wanted to distract in order to escape, but he didn't understand who shot the arrow and whether they wanted to help him with it. Yuren sent him a message that she didn't owe him anything else. She thought that would be enough. She just didn't understand why she cared about him. Yuren thought that ordinary players should not know about the importance of the parchment. That group was well organized. She is a member of the K squad. If that's the case, then Yuren should have reported it to Detective Wang. She called him and told him her location, and then added that their target was attacked by a group of players. He replied that she could be sure that they were already watching them. Detective Wang said that there is another important news, they found the thief of the glasses. He thanked her for the information they are starting to act, and told her to remember her safety. Yuren was glad that her efforts had not been in vain. In reality, the same man who attacked Sui is furious and out of anger threw his glasses on the floor. He wanted to find out what kind of person he was. The girl told him to forget about him because they have a new order. The man asked what this time. The man was surprised that they would say that after what they had done for them. The girl replied that this information is of a higher level. Their subordinate was standing in the doorway. He was surprised to hear about national espionage. He said that he had accidentally overheard, and in fact came to inform that the task of the detective bureau was completed. The girl grabbed his cheeks and put a red pill in his mouth, saying that an obedient person is a dead person. 
Su Yi walked down the street and grinned while looking at Yuren's message. He was amused by the words that now she doesn't know anything. Beichu is really special. The bruise from the aura was serious. When Su Yi treated him, she must have been in pain, but she didn't make a sound. A man came up behind me and asked me to stay put. He turned around in surprise. Su Yi was going to be detained on a theft case, so Detective Wang was asked to follow him. The detective team still found him. The man said to follow him further. Su Yi was surprised to see the school cafeteria. He pressed on some brick and a secret door appeared. Su Yi had no idea that there was a secret base there. When they arrived at the main entrance, the security system looked serious. Given all the precautions, they had some important information. This is Su Yi's chance to learn more. He was shocked to see that the whole room was plastered with photos of some girl. He didn't know that this is what a modern geek room looks like. His senile brain couldn't figure it out. The man sitting at the table called his name, and then corrected himself by calling him a thief of glasses. It was Wang Hao, the chief detective. They could finally talk in private. Su Yi didn't even recognize him, he didn't look like himself at all. Moreover, the man was wearing a t-shirt with a photo of the same girl. Su Yi pretended to be a fool and asked what kind of glasses he was talking about in the thief in question. Detective Wang asked not to deny that he had a good look at Su Yi's face in the toilet. The man told him to follow him so that he would show something interesting. The detective poked some buttons on the wall, and there appeared a glass through which the training ground could be seen. And Sui's roommates were there. He didn't understand what they had forgotten there. The task of a detective agency is to find suitable talents in the fantasy according to the criteria. There, students become warriors overnight, as if in a fantasy. Sui noticed that this is possible thanks to VR glasses. He wasn't sure how it worked, but he saw with his own eyes how Jin Fan and Sun Kai performed breathing techniques in the game. The practice of breathing techniques allows them to enhance their aura. Thus, they receive previously unimaginable power. Sui asked with a grin if he was right. Detective Wang didn't understand how the guy learned so much. Aaron Beichu was right, he is an amazing person. Since Sui knew everything, Detective Wang suggested moving on to the next stage. He handed the guy the phone on which there was a call. Someone from there said that he had been following Sui for a long time. The voice was like a little girl. She knew what he was looking for and asked if he wanted to help them. Sui asked what he would get after this help. She said he was looking for a secret kingdom. She promised to show where it is if Sui helps catch the K-Squad. Without hesitation, the guy agreed to their terms. Meanwhile, that thief was being beaten by his own comrades. He hid for several months and eventually crawled himself. Then he had to be taken to the teacher. But first the guys were going to teach him a lesson. And then he was saved by Su Yi. So they met again. He asked who these guys were, and the thief replied that they were most likely sent by the teacher. But now the thief needed to find Zio. He promised that he would find him. The thief entered some room, and there was a guy lying there, or more precisely, his lifeless body. He was pale, and there were bruises under his eyes. The thief was shocked and scared. He didn't understand what had been done to his brother. It seems he was poisoned. First, he was pumped with aura and medications, and then completely drained of energy. And that's all Squad K. The thief didn't know what to do, and then he remembered about the pills. The teacher gave him pills. As long as Zio accepts them, there is a chance to survive. The thief poured those red pills on his hand. Sui grabbed his arm and told him to wake up. He does not believe that he really does not understand who is to blame for what happened. Sui opened his eyes, saying that this was the teacher that the thief was shutting up about. The pills fell to the floor. The teacher used it. The pills were poison, and all the students were the experimental rats of their beloved teacher. Nausi collapsed exhausted, dropping the bottle of pills. His rose-colored glasses were cruelly broken. Sui thought he was like a child. He touched Zio, there was almost no spiritual energy left in him, but at least he was still alive. Sui said that the guy is weak, but there is a pulse. He could still be saved. Mousy asked hopefully if he could save his brother. Sui confidently said that he could, because he was studying Chinese medicine. He reached into his memory palace and began searching for the book he needed. A scroll flew straight into his hands from the upper shelves. They needed dragon bones, a marrow flower, a grass of hope. This pill is from Sui's 100-year-old destroyed case. He was going to try. He concentrated his aura in his palms and squeezed them. A red pill appeared there. Mousy was surprised that Sui was so good at medicine as well. He said to take the pill faster and shove it into Zayu's mouth. When it got into his mouth, he seemed to come to life. The skin acquired a natural shade, although there were bruises under the eyes. Zayu woke up. Mousy immediately began to hug him, rejoicing that his brother was much better. Zayu asked what he had forgotten here. 
but this was only a temporary solution. Zaya was too weak, he needed to rest. Mousy thanked him. Sui asked what was going on in the K-Squad and where their teacher was. Just as Mousy was about to confess, Wang Hao appeared. His surveillance paid off. Sui didn't understand what he had left there. Detective Wang also offered Mousy the best medical services in exchange for information about the K-Squad. Zaya was carried on a stretcher to an ambulance. Sui stopped Mousy and asked him not to do anything stupid for his brother's sake. He promised to remember it. Then Detective Wang came up and said that Sui was doing well, because thanks to him they found an abandoned base and a member of the K-Squad. He replied that there was nothing for it, and asked to tell more about this K-Squad. The detective said that as Sui had already noticed, they were conducting experiments on people. He replied that there were other reasons. Immortality, for example. Detective Wang told him to forget about it and warned him that all the promised rewards had already been sent to his home. Detective Wang clearly didn't want Sui to know too much. He needed to go to the secret realm and find out for himself. He immediately ran to the fantasy. According to the data that he was given, the departure to the secret realm was in a cave, so it's not surprising that Sui couldn't find him earlier. Inside the room in the middle was something like a stage, on which there was a drawing of Heorin. Sui suddenly got a taming skill. He thought it was some kind of bug. And then a wolf appeared, surrounded by a black aura. Sui tensed up and took up the sword. It was a long-tailed wolf with an unknown level. He rushed at the guy, and he wounded him with a sword, but the wolf's health did not go away. Sui was trying to figure out how to tame him. The wolf released some clumps of aura at the guy, who did not expect this at all. Sui knocked them into the ceiling, causing it to collapse, and stones began to fall from it. When the stones fell on the wolf, he began to whine in pain. Sui thought that something was controlling him. The wolf began to move quickly, and it is difficult for the guy to catch him, but he was able to. Sui noticed a rune on his forehead that he had seen before. The wolf launched the aura clots at him again. Sui realized that it was all about the mask, and now he only had to figure out how to destroy it. He was next to the wolf in a second and pulled off the mask, saying that it was bad to control someone. Sui broke the mask. The wolf seemed to have become more beautiful. Sui smiled at him and was glad to see his real appearance. He stroked his nose. He was able to tame the beast, and now it remained to teach him some commands. Sui ordered him to lie down, and he lay down peacefully. He had heard that it was very pleasant to squeeze animals, so he decided to try. Sui started stroking him, and the wolf suddenly turned into a girl. He was surprised that there were monsters that could transform. Sui threw his scarf over her, it was huge, and the girl walked up to some wall. She touched it, and there appeared a drawing of a wolf and some inscriptions. The kingdom of the Ark people is located in the north of Erowen. They have a white body and hair, and the girl is their divine beast. Sui didn't know that the Ark people existed. They are said to be immortal and worship Heorin. There was definitely a connection between these people and Heorin. Sui sat in front of the drawing on the wall with the girl and thought that only the Ark people could give the answers he needed. But Sui still doesn't understand how this is related to fantasy and where he can find out everything. Detective Wang is not going to tell him anything, and Mousy is immediately dismissed. Only the game developers or the Beichu family remain. But the Beichu family is blue-blooded, and just like that, without unnecessary bureaucracy, it will not be easy to meet. Then it dawned on Sui that he could write urine in the fantasy game. She, meanwhile, was driving in the car. The girl was talking to Miss Jiang Shan about how it must be very hard for her. She shouldn't accompany urine with her busy schedule. Jiang Shan replied that she was too kind, because she almost died trying to expose the K-Squad. Two jades are worthless. Jiang Shan is the chief inspector of the eastern region. It was the same girl whose photos were plastered all over Detective Wang's office. Jiang Shan had a bunch of jades that she poured out of her sleeve. She offered to give more jades, but Yuren refused because she had not yet become an aura master. In general, it seemed to her that jades were rare, although Jiang Shan had more than a hundred of them. The girl asked if Yuren was going to become an aura warrior. She nodded. Jiang Shan said that if Miss Beichu didn't mind, the chief inspector would help the sisters practice to get results faster. Yuren knows that the inspector appreciates the two of them very much. The driver looked at it with shock, but silently continued to do his job. Suddenly the car exploded. The explosion was so powerful that it turned over. It was set up by one of the teacher's dogs the man with the scar on his eye. He grabbed the door and told the Beichu girl to get out. When he opened the door, there was no one inside. Behind him, Jiang Shan said that he was not looking for Ohm. A surprise attack is a good idea, but the inspector was with Yuren today. It was she who pulled out the Beichu, which she held in her arms, and the driver, who hung on the threads of the aura. The man irritably told her to shut up and give Yuren to him, after which he ran in their direction. 
Jiang Shan quickly tied him up with aura threads. She was very interested in why it was necessary to give urine. She added that it was time for this man to surrender to Detective Wang. He advised the little one, even though he did not know who she was, to mind her own business. He was covered in a fiery aura and ran towards Jiang Shan. Yuren called her name in fright. She was not even scared, but sent some lozenges from the aura towards the enemy. They touched his shoulders, arms and legs, revealing a flower from behind. These things stuck to the ground with their stems, thereby limiting the movements of the man. Yuren was struck by such power from a single movement. The girl was both fascinated and frightened by the inspector's strength. The spiritual plexus blocks the opponent's aura, preventing the use of techniques. Jiang Shan set conditions, if a man does not want to die, then he will have to answer questions. The first thing she asked was why they needed Yuren Beichu. The enemy did not understand where this child came from, because spiritual weaving was a rather complex technique. He wasn't going to get them alive, so he wanted to crack some pill, but Jiang Shan managed to snatch it with her aura. She asked if these were their secret aura enhancement pills and if he really thought she would let him use it. The man called her a fool and said that her spiritual plexus was connecting only the aura. Therefore, he will not use it, just a blow, in his opinion, will be enough to deal with it. The enemy ran at Zhang Shan, intending to strike, and she just grinned at his stupidity. When he was near her, Yuren hit him hard. Such an elementary technique works even on the warrior aura. Jiang Shan said he screwed up and laughed about it. As a result, the enemy was captured and taken to the detective bureau. Squad K is already working openly. Jiang Shan assumed that they were looking for a passage. Yuren asked what the passage was. The Jiang Shan language is her enemy. It didn't matter anymore, because Yuren would have found out sooner or later anyway. Once Beichu found out everything, Jiang Shan decided to tell the truth at that moment. Fantasy is a projection of another world. It is called the world of mountains and seas and is opened by their country, extremely rich in spiritual resources. Some years ago, the research department took the initiative. The players selected with the help of fantasy will lead the expedition. Yuren compared it to conscription, and Jiang Shan agreed. They needed new forces to guard their border. Recently, they have been under pressure from other countries. Jiang Shan assumed that they were behind the K squad. She asked if Yuren would go to the mountains and seas. She remained silent, shocked by the information. Jiang Shan needed to go and sort out the mess. She ran to the police car. Yuren's heart was pounding wildly. She didn't understand what was going on. But she knew that if she became as strong as Jiang Shan, then she would never have to be a burden again. Then Yuren remembered that she had forgotten something important Sui had sent her a message saying that her shot was great. He suggested they meet at 5 to practice shooting together. Yuren didn't mind on the condition that he would teach her a few combat skills. Sui had been waiting for her for a long time. Already in the evening, the girl was taking a bath and was sad that the guy probably thought that she had forgotten about the meeting and thought that Yuren was an unreliable person. She didn't know how she would look into his eyes in the future. Then the girl heard some noise in the bedroom. She quickly put on a robe and went out to see who was there. Only the vase was lying near the bed, and Yuren calmed down, thinking that it was the wind. But then someone closed her mouth from behind and told her to be calm. She bit the man's finger, and he released her. Yuren turned around and was surprised to see Dr. Su. He said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time and what a coincidence it was. Yuren asked what Sui had left there. He did not know what to do next. His grandiose plan ended at the point to get into Yuren's room, and then he did not come up with anything. Sui can't say that he came to her just because she missed a meeting in the game. Since he couldn't tell Yuren anything, she was going to call the police. The girl was already holding the phone to her ear. Sui asked Miss Beichu to wait a minute. He asked to be listened to because he had something to tell Yuren. Sui casually took her phone away from her. He began to say that he finally had the opportunity to tell about a secret. He wanted to distract Yuren somehow so that she wouldn't call the police. He said that her father had secretly contacted Teacher Lai about treating a dangerous illness. Yuren was afraid that her father was really sick and didn't tell her anything. She asked if it was true. Sui replied that it was true and that Mr. Beichu was secretly seeking treatment so as not to worry his daughters. Now Yuren understood why her father had been looking bad lately. Sui was very worried about the girl's father. He walked over to the sofa, took a shirt from there and threw it over Yuren's shoulders. She replied that she almost knew Sui, but trusted Professor Lai. The guy mentally rejoiced that the lie really worked. He thanked her for believing him. Sui didn't have much time left. He only needed to find out about Heorin, after which he would leave. Sui said he was ashamed to admit it, but he got lost in their mansion. Yuren asked if he could find her father's room. He nodded in agreement, after which she escorted him to the right room. 
It was dark there, and when the guy moved forward, Yuren pointed a lamp at him and turned on the light. Sui didn't understand what was going on, but the girl said she knew it was him. His jacket was perfectly familiar to her. Yuren took the lamp and started waving it like a sword the long leg allowed. She said that he was the same thief of glasses, whom she saw on the fateful day. Sui easily dodged her attacks and said that he knew that everything could not pass so easily. At that moment, he grabbed the lamp and pulled Yuren towards him. She fell into his arms. Sui asked if she would give him a moment of attention and called her a young lady. He admitted that he really had the glasses, but he, like Yuren, was on the side of the detectives. Sui said she could check with Detective Wang. He advised the girl to get dressed, otherwise she would catch a cold. Then Yijin jumped on Sui from behind, telling her to stay away from her sister. She flew through the window on a kind of rope. The fabric was too loose, so it tore, and Yijin collided with Sui during the flight and knocked him and his sister to the floor. He ran over them so that they would not hit, and as a result suffered the most. They also cut him off with a jerk and hit him, and then they twisted and tied him up, hanging him from the ceiling. Yijin continued to beat him with some huge toy paw, saying that she knew he was a bad person. Yurin called the detective, and was very surprised to see that he sent her a message. She called Yijin over and showed the phone screen. She didn't believe it either, but Detective Wang wouldn't lie about that. Yurin told Sui that she had checked his story. Yijin apologized with a guilty expression on her face and said that they misunderstood him. Sui was glad that they had come to an understanding. Yijin was going to untie him. She offered to call the guards. Yurin said it was their own fault. Yijin protested, asked if it was normal to break into the room like that. And even if Sui helps the detective, he is still a stranger. Yijin grabbed Yurin's arm. She knows that in order to protect her sister, she does not involve her in many cases and does not introduce her to different people. But Yijin was also worried about her. Yurin wanted to say something, but her sister continued. First, the thief of glasses, and then work with the intelligence group. And on that day, she was attacked by the K squad. Yijin began to cry that even though they were sisters, they were so far from each other. All she does is watch from afar. Yijin was very much afraid that one day she would never see her sister again. Yurin smiled knowingly and hugged her. Now she knew what was on her mind. Yurin thought she was a bad sister. Sui now understood why he didn't wait for her. He said that they, the sisters, have a great relationship, and therefore the guy did not approve the two ladies by untying the ropes. Sui was already standing on the floor, and in his hands was the same rope. Hijin swung at him with that very paw, saying that he was really very dangerous. Yurin asked to stop. Sui avoided the blow when he bowed and apologized. He said it was his fault, because he broke into their house without waiting for Miss Beichu in the game. Yijin hid behind her sister, embarrassed, and said that Suyi, it turns out, can feel guilty. Then it dawned on Yurin that the guy could not have known that she would be online. Suyi said that their meeting was scheduled for five. The sisters did not immediately understand what he meant. And then they realized that the guy in the game is registered as Suyi. Yijin couldn't believe that a person like Suyi could beat Suyi. She was pointing at him and getting angry. Suyi was sitting in a chair, raising his hands in a surrender gesture, and was ready to show his ID number in the game. Yurin confidently said that there was no need, because she believed that he was Tsuyi. Yijin continued to be indignant. Even if he was Kuyi, he was the one who broke into their house at night. Yurin knew what she was doing. She promised Tsuyi that she would not press charges, but only with one condition. Given Tsuyi's aura skills, Yurin was counting on him to train them. Yijin excitedly said that it was too risky and that there were other ways. Yurin said there was no other way. They have a lot of time, but not mom and dad. Yijin became sad and agreed to do as her sister says. Now Sui realized that the reason for Yurin's desire was in her parents. He immediately agreed to the terms. The girl was surprised. Sui said that if he wasn't disgusted with the two of them, he would try his best to help. They went into the dance hall. They sat and meditated while Sui examined their aura. They asked if there were any results. He checked, and they have an abundance of auras, but it is blocked. It will take a little time to open their acupuncture points. Actually, it wasn't that difficult, but Su Yi decided to pretend that it wasn't. Yijin replied that it was not their fault, but genetics. Su Yi said he thinks the best option for them is double cultivation, using an external aura to revive a stagnant one. The Beichu sisters agreed. They already wanted to become stronger. It shouldn't cause them any problems. Yijin said in Yurin's ear that she had read about double cultivation in some men's magazine. She completely misrepresented everything, and Sui knew it from their look. Modern reading has distorted everything. The guy touched the floor with his palm and told them to calm down, because they were thinking about the wrong double cultivation. A glowing circle appeared around them on the floor. This is a circle for aura freedom. It will help them absorb energy faster. When Sui presses the acupuncture point, others around her will light up. 
and when everyone opens, the sisters will increase their rank. It was an ancient aura circle, and Yurin thought that such were already lost. Sui didn't understand what lost meant. He had just invented it so that it wouldn't be so boring. The jades they provided him were of high quality, so they had to give a lot of aura. But the process of opening points will still be difficult. Sui held the jades in his palms, then squeezed them together. The whole process has begun. He said it would hurt a little and asked the Beichu sisters to hold on. The aura from the jades accumulated in Sui's palms, and he applied them to Yurin and Yijin's backs. But he still had to use his aura. He started pouring it in. A pillar of light appeared around the girls. Now both sisters were of the fourth rank, and so far this was their maximum. They were going to go see their father's office. Tired girls lay and tried to recover. There was a secret passage behind the books in Mr. Beichu's office. He was guarded by a puppet, albeit an old kind. The Beichu family is not that simple, but Sui has dealt with them. He found the information he needed. Mousy was right about fantasy the game is a link with another world. The world of mountains and seas. Sui was puzzled by the fact that he could live in both worlds. But the question was different, where is the passage to that world? There wasn't a word about it. In one of the windows on the panel was the logo of a detective agency. Sui was surprised when he saw this. Wang Hao's boss is called Jiang Shan, and Sui thought she should know the passage place. Looks like he's going to have to meet the chief inspector. In the morning, the sisters woke up on the bed in the bedroom. Most likely, they were transferred by Sui. There was a note nearby. The guy drew a diagram of the aura collection circle for them. He wrote that he wished them both success, but it was better not to rush fate and signed with his real name. Yurin knew his name now, and she was glad of it. On the street in front of the university, Suyi met Jin Fan and Sun Kai. They were surprised that he was already up. He didn't understand what they were talking about. Sun Kai said that when he was brushing his teeth, he saw Suyi curled up under the blanket and sleeping like the dead. Only last night the guy wasn't in the room, and he had no idea who it could be. Suyi thanked them for the reminder and said that he had forgotten something in the room, so he would go to couples a little later. Except it was Sunday. When Suyi returned, he thought that this was how the K-Squad decided to take revenge. When he pulled off the blanket, he was surprised to see a long-tailed wolf. The girl was sleeping with her arms and legs wrapped around his pillow. When the long-tailed wolf realized who was in front of her, she rushed to hug Suyi. She was obviously glad to see him. As a result, they fell to the floor and the guy hit his head again, as the day before in the Beichu mansion. Sui thought that the long-tailed wolf was an NPC, so he didn't understand where she came from in the real world. Sun Kai and Jin Fan were returning to the room. It was clear from the conversations outside the door. One said that the donuts were especially delicious and offered to go buy more, and the second said that they hadn't figured out their homework yet. Sui didn't understand why they came back, and then looked at the phone and realized that it was Sunday. It would be over if the neighbors found out that he was hiding the girl in the room. He urgently needed to hide the long-tailed wolf somewhere. The girl wanted to run into some door, but Sui managed to intercept her. When Jin Fan and Sun Kai were in the room, they again saw a blanket rolled up in a ball on the bed. They thought that Sui was ill again and he decided to sleep. The same one moved to the memory palace with the girl. Moving her there was the only option. It was lucky that she was a spiritual beast. She opened her mouth admiringly. Since this was Sui's private world, it was safe in it. Now he wanted to find out how she got into the real world. The girl started waving her arms and making some sounds. It was logical that she couldn't speak. Sui didn't understand anything, but then he thought about it and took out a book. He wanted to teach her the language. I started with the alphabet. The girl kept saying fox. Sui said she's a wolf, so she needs to stop saying fox. Then she uttered the word revenge. Sui asked if she wanted to take revenge on the one who put the mask on her, and she agreed. The guy was thinking that if their world is connected with the world of the mountains and mine, it could mean that the long-tailed wolf came from there. Sui hoped that she would know how to get back, because then he wouldn't have to go to Jiangshan. The guy said that he would help the girl with revenge only if she signed a contract with him. Sui made some kind of ball out of the aura. It was Shu Ye. He was going to provide her with a soul in their world. But in exchange, she has to take him to her home. That was the only condition. You won't have to pay any more. Their aura will unite. Sui pointed this ball at her, and she began to glow all over. She marveled at the sea of the benefactor's aura. The girl didn't understand why Sui had such strength at such a young age. She saw the pendant around his neck and realized that it was fate. Aura lifted her up, and now the girl came down to him. The contract was concluded. From now on, he was her immortal master. Sui asked how she knew he was immortal. 
The girl replied that she, too, was immortal and felt the same smell from the owner. Sui asked her to rest in his memory palace after all the injuries. He still had to finish some things in that world, after which they could send a world of mountains and seas. When Sui was about to leave, Dian Vushka stopped him. She warned that she could smell another immortal. He asked Cheng Wong, the long-tailed wolf, if she knew who it was and if he was connected to the secret of Sui's immortality. She only knew that the unknown was secretive and very strong. Cheng Huang compared his strength to Su Yi's and said that her master was no match for him. She told him to be careful. Then Su Yi found himself back at the headquarters of the detective bureau. He looked around so that no one would notice him. The Cheng Huang card did not disappoint, and everything went like clockwork. She was suddenly beside him. Su Yi told her to be quiet, otherwise he would be caught. Even if the owner is caught, Cheng Huang will be able to save him. They were immediately spotted, as expected from the headquarters. In fact, it's not because of them that the alarm started playing. Two Aura warriors were fighting. It was Zhang Shan and the teacher. The first guarded the portal to the world of mountains and seas, and told the second not to even think about getting into another world. The teacher replied that Zhang Shan would not be able to stop her. It was a collision of blue and purple auras. Su Yi watched the fight from the sidelines and couldn't believe that Jiang Shan looked like this. And the fact that Wang Hao obeys her surprised him very much. Su Yi noticed the portal and realized that it was from there that Cheng Wang came from. She confirmed his guesses. It was the entrance to the world of mountains and seas. Cheng Wang told them to hurry while those two were fighting and couldn't see anything around. 